Hey guys, welcome back to another Surgical Tech Tips. Today's video is going to be a first assist video. Uh, I wanted to touch on something that I do as a first assist in the OR and more specifically in uh, cabbage procedures or coronary artery bypass procedures. And my role, my big role in that procedure is uh, harvesting the uh, saphenous vein endoscopically. So, I want to start this off with a super, super simple explanation of what a cabbage procedure is, and then we'll move on to all the hardware and stuff like that. This is my incredibly horrible drawing of a heart, and this will be our saphenous vein. This little purple mark here is a blockage of some plaque and we will bypass that plaque with our saphenous vein. So we will take this saphenous vein and attach it distal to the uh, blockage and proximal to the aorta. So we are getting blood flow directly from the aorta back to the coronary artery and back to all this heart muscle down here that is no longer getting blood flow because of this blockage of plaque in that coronary artery. That is a super, super basic explanation of what a cabbage procedure is and what we are using this saphenous vein for. All right, now that we're here at the hospital, we're gonna go over the whole saphenous vein harvest technique that I do as an FA. So let's start with breaking down the hardware. So this is the McKay uh, VasoView HemaPro system that we use here at my hospital and what I use as an FA harvesting vein. So the first thing that the FA is going to need to be able to harvest vein is obviously a scope to dissect around the vein. Uh, you'll insert this, uh, this balloon stopper over the scope first and then follow that up with the nose cone. That's essentially it. Aside from that, it just comes to hooking up the camera and light source and uh, insufflation after you're at the field. As far as the cautery goes for cauterizing any of the branches down the saphenous vein and down the leg, you will be hooking up this uh, HemaPro system and it's again pretty self-explanatory. It even gives you directions on the side of the HemaPro itself. Insert the endoscope and insert the tool with the jaw tip up. Pretty easy. Last thing, these, these last three items that are in the kit, we have a 5cc, a 30cc syringes, and a, a larger uh, kind of rubber grommet for the, uh, for the balloon. Uh, we switch this grommet out uh, when we need a bigger diameter to fit the actual HemaPro itself after we dissect out the leg. And uh, as far as these syringes go, the big syringe we just fill up with air so we can blow up our balloon. And uh, the 5 cc syringe we just use as, uh, as an irrigant uh, to get any blood or, or fatty tissue off of the lens of the scope as we're using the HemaPro. Now to give you a better understanding of harvesting the saphenous vein, you need to know exactly where the saphenous vein is. So, woo, check out these legs. I know I'm hairy. Uh, Think, think of it like this, look at your leg, touch your patella, your patella, your knee, this is, this is your knee, okay? You come, come a little medial and you can feel your media epicondyle to your tibia. Go two finger breasts below the tibia, medial, and you'll be able to find your saphenous vein. Saphenous vein usually runs right in that crease. It runs all the way up your thigh, up into your groin area and distally it runs all the way down your tibia uh, closer to your ankle and we can dissect out that entire length of vein if we absolutely need to depending on how many grafts we're going to be doing the, during the procedure. Now to be able to see exactly where that vein is because obviously some people have 
more fatty tissue in their legs than others. It can be difficult to just find if you make an incision there and just start digging around trying to find the saphenous vein. So what I like to do is, as soon as that patient is asleep, I will go ahead and grab the ultrasound and some Doppler gel and our little probe here and I will ultrasound the leg to make sure I find the exact anatomical position of the saphenous vein. I can follow the saphenous vein all the way up the thigh and all the way down the leg, down the tibia as well to ensure that it's going to be a good size or a good length that I'm going to need. If it's not, I might try out the right leg instead of the left leg. Just depends. Now after I'm done ultrasounding, I, I will always take a sharpie and mark the leg. Uh, usually I'll, I'll do a line or I may do some dots as I follow the vein up the thigh or, or down, the, down the tibia. Uh, just, just in case, especially if there's multiple uh, large veins and I just want to make sure that I'm following the right vein, uh, I may do like a little connect the dots going down the leg. It can be a little tricky sometimes. Draping, uh, you will always put a rolled towel underneath the knee. The FA usually has their own mayo stand down at the bottom of the field that has all of their vein harvest equipment on there. <clears throat> I'll hook up my camera and get everything ready, have my bow be ready as soon as we're done with the timeout and the surgeon has made the first incision. And I will go ahead and make my incision just at the knee. Uh, you want to be like kind of right there near that half point so you can go up the thigh and down the leg and still have you know enough length in your scope to be able to reach as far as you need to reach. I will dissect out that saphenous vein, uh, right angle vessel loop around it to, to gain control of the vein. <clears throat> dissect out enough to where I can fit my, uh, my balloon, uh, my little balloon cannula in there. As soon as I have enough room with that, I will take my scope with the balloon cannula, insert it in to the leg. I will always keep the nose cone on top of the vein initially, uh, dissect in a little bit, just enough to where I'll be able to get that cannula in there, inflate the balloon, and let the insufflation do its work with opening up the tunnel that I'm about to create around the saphenous vein. Using the nose cone, I will dissect out around the vein, usually staying uh, around 10 o'clock and 5 o'clock because that's just in where not a lot of branches come off of, so it's, a, it's really a safe zone. And any branches that I see along the way, I'll, I'll kind of dissect uh, to the left and right of them. And the insufflation really does a great job at helping me dissect everything out and creating the tunnel that needs to be created. So I will go all the way up the thigh on top of the saphenous vein, come all the way back, and then go b below the saphenous vein and really kind of dissect out all the other branches that I need to dissect out. Same thing down below. Uh, sometimes I'll start on the bottom instead of the top. It just depends on the anatomy and you know, you just gotta be flexible with it. As soon as everything's dissected out, I'll swap everything over to my Hemapro here. Uh, this is my cauterization and sealing device for any of those saphenous branches or any of those branches off the saphenous that I need to burn to be able to take this out to be used as a as conduit for the heart surgery. Uh, the only thing that is really a major thing is that we take the insufflation off of the cannula and we switch it over to the Hemapro itself. So instead of um, CO2 coming directly out of the cannula port, it's going to be coming directly out of the end of my Hemapro to assist me in keeping that tunnel open as I burn off any of the branches along the way. Also, I've got this cool little C-ring at the end of the scope here. This is really, really great device to use for uh, manipulation of that vein to be able to <clears throat> pull it over to the left and the right for me, be, for me to be able to get my clamp in there to uh, burn any, uh, any um, branches that I need to burn without having to burn anything close to the saphenous vein itself and possibly damage it. After all the branches have been dissected and burned, uh, I basically, in the thigh portion, I will go back all the way up to the uh, proximal end of the thigh and I will make a stab incision in the thigh, put like a, a little hemostat in there, pull it up, 
tie off the uh, proximal end of the, of the saphenous vein so it doesn't bleed back. Cut it. Go back in with my scope and pull that vein all the way out to where I made my first two centimeter incision. Same thing with the uh, going down the leg, I'll make a stab incision down by the ankle. Tie, tie off of that, uh, that distal end and then cut proximal to that distal end and pull the vein all the way out. <clears throat> and then comes the most exciting and most fun part, going over every single one of those branches and uh, preparing this vein. And by preparing it, I mean tying off every single one of those branches that you burned with this HemaPro. You need to go back and you need to tie off every single one of them. Uh, I know some FAs and PAs out there, they, uh, they clip. Uh, but at my hospital and the way I was taught, we tie every single one of those off with a 4-0 or a, or a 5-0 silk stitch. Now one of the most important things that you have to remember uh, is how is the blood going to flow? The blood is flowing from, from the aorta to a coronary artery. So how will that hook up with a vein? Because veins have valves. Always make sure that your blood flow is going in the direction distal to proximal on your vein. So if you went all the way down, if I went all the way down to the ankle and all the way up to the thigh, when I take that vein out, I'm going to be taking my distal end, the, the end that I took from the ankle, and I'm going to be hooking this vessel cannula up with blood into that end, because that is where I want my blood to flow through. If I hooked it up proximal, it's gonna hit a valve and that blood flow is gonna stop and that is not going to be any help to anybody at all. Now once I hook this vessel cannula up to that distal end of the vein, uh, it's, it's, great, it's a great, great tool to have to be able to dilate the vein, which you absolutely need to do. You need to be able to dilate that vein and see how big it's gonna get for you and to also be able to dilate any of those branches that you burned so you can tie them off or clip them. Uh, for us, here's our little suture towel with uh, 5 0 and 4 0 ties. Now, after that vein is completely prepared and I went through all of that hard work, uh, you know, tying off every single one of those branches, all of my docs that I work with here, they like us to mark the vein with this uh, skin marker. We mark it all the way down on one side of the vein. Uh, they do that to enable them to know that their vein is not twisting uh, as they're anastomosing everything on the heart. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Then you, you close up your small little incision that you did, uh, you know, rinse out the tunnels if you need to of any blood that's left over, and uh, that's it. And you do all of this in the span of hopefully under an hour. When you do a cabbage procedure, the surgeon is at the head of the bed. They do the incision over the sternum, sternotomy, take down the internal mammary artery for another piece of conduit that they're going to use to anastomose uh, normally on the LAD. And if you are able, as an FA, to harvest a vein and get it 100% prepared and close that leg before they are done anastomosing or even before they're done anastomosing that first uh, mammary graft, you're in good shape. Surgeons shouldn't have to wait and stuff happens, everybody's leg is different, sometimes you'll get these real real big legs that are just full, full of subcutaneous tissue and it is extremely hard, you just get, you know, Fatty, fatty tissue falling into the tunnel uh, like water and it's, it can be very, very difficult to see at times. But um, getting that saphenous vein out and not, not you know, having your surgeon wait for you uh, to get that conduit out is, is the goal in this whole thing. So that's pretty much it guys. That's kind of like a brief little icing overview of you know, what I do to harvest a vein in these cabbage procedures. Obviously after we're done harvesting the vein, we have to go up to the head of the bed and help the surgeon uh, with all of the anastomoses on all the coronary arteries. But um, yeah, 
that's that's pretty much how I harvest a vein. The light version of it. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. I hope you liked the video. I hope it uh, hope it was a little interesting for you. I absolutely love doing this. It's it's been you know kind of a dream of mine for a while, and to be able to actually do this and and to be able to help in this capacity in the OR is by far one of the most amazing things and amazing experiences I've had in the OR to date. So thanks for watching. If you're a Patreon supporter, thank you so much for your support. And if you're not, check out the Patreon page below. Always thank you for sharing and liking the videos. And I'll see you guys very soon. I got a lot of videos I'm doing this weekend, so. <laughs> I'll see you soon.